Hello everyone, hope you are well. Hope you are having a great day in the market. Today is Thursday, July 25th. It is lunchtime, so I thought I would take some time to make this video. I put that video out the other day about Trade Titan's strategy, and I had attended that meeting with him, hoping I was gonna learn about his strategy and how he manages to get big those big payouts on micros. Unfortunately, it was turned out to be kind of a scammy situation where he was trying to sell us stuff, but he did talk enough about his strategy that I felt like I could figure it out. I didn't think that his indicators were why he was being successful, and I, st I still do think he is making payouts on the strategies, but I didn't think it was the indicators. I think it was his risk management. So he trades micros, and he kind of gave us a little demo on how he did it, that video has a link to that webinar that I attended. If you want, I'll link it to the end of this video in case you want to go back and check it out. He uses levels based on options to you know, add on to positions and for his entries and targets and stops. I don't personally have access to those levels and I'm certainly not paying $500 a month to join his Discord and get them. And I don't really think we need them. I tried to create a similar type of system and just use levels that I'm already using. And what are those levels? I'm using the 26 spot and the 77 spot, and I'm using the 50 and the 00 round number levels. Other levels you see on my charts are gonna be the New York Open and the Daily Candle Open. I have an indicator on NinjaTrader that plots this level for me every day. I also have an indicator that plots the New York Open for me every day. I use my large brick Ranko chart to identify the trend direction. I keep that on my other monitor here. Let's open this guy up a little bit bigger. So on my left side here, I've got three charts. These are my 30 minute charts. These are session charts. I've actually got medium brick Rankos on the Dow and the ES. What I'm looking for on these charts is just to see if they're moving in the same direction as NQ. I like to have the markets going in the same direction, especially in a trend. When they're not going in the same direction, a lot of times we're in a, in a trading range and that's a good clue. But I also like to see where the session gaps are. So you can see here we opened today with this gap. The Dow filled its opening gap first, then ES filled it. And I believe that NQ is in process of filling this gap. We're going to chop around a little bit for lunch, but we are going up to fill this gap today. And I believe going up to the EMA, at least 300. So... I use these charts here to understand what the market direction is, where the gaps are. 80% of the time we fill these section gaps before the end of the day. 80% is pretty high, so it's important to know where those gaps are. Yesterday we gapped and just went, here we go. We are going to come back and fill that gap, so I keep it marked on my charts. And this is a target for me. If we start getting up near that area, I'm going to be shooting for that gap fill. The other thing I use are the daily and weekly expected levels. I've got them on my chart and I talked a little bit about that in other videos. This morning, I thought we would come down into 945, certainly possibly come down and tag the Sigma level. If not, I'm looking for the expected high of the day. I use these charts to help me find levels. I also use my volume profile. I have marked on my chart yesterday's value area low, and here is yesterday's value area high. Here is yesterday's POC. I didn't mark that, but I know it's there at 20. Those are targets. So we have already busted through value area low. We're looking for the rotation up, especially when you see we have a gap above. I definitely would be taking that rotation. So I, I don't want really to get too in the weeds with this stuff because that's not what this video is about, but I'm just trying to give an idea on how I figure out what direction the market is going in. And you need to know that before you take any trades, you must know what direction we're going in and what is the target. So there's lots of different ways you can get your targets. You can use support and resistance. You can use round numbers. You can use volume profile levels. You can use you know, daily expected moves price structure. You can use daily pivots and their Fibonacci extensions. You can use the IB. There's just so many ways, guys. This is just how I do it. And I have been posting shorts every morning. Now I'm going to try to do that every morning to give you guys the current volume profile levels that I'm working with. 
the expected levels for the day and what levels I'm tar targeting up and down. And every morning, that's what I do. I figure out what my levels are on the way up and on the way down so that I'm prepared no matter which way we go. All right, so today we're going up and now I know what the direction is, so I wanna find entries. And now I come to my entry chart here and I am using the Trader Oracle's Optimus Indicator on this chart. I'm gonna explain how I use it. Here's the Trader Oracle's YouTube channel. He does live stream his trading, I believe, in the Discord at 9.30 every day. He is so funny, guys. I mean, I don't think there is a funnier trader out there to watch. He really makes me laugh. So how I'm using this indicator, the TR represents a uh, trend reversal. When you see this, you want to tighten your stop. I wouldn't necessarily close your position, but you want to definitely tighten your stop because we could get a full reversal or we could just get a little pullback. They're pretty accurate. I will say this indicator overall is very accurate. The arrows are gonna be your entry arrows. And that's an entry signal right here. This is an entry signal here. This is an entry signal. This is an entry signal. These little triangles are like add-on areas. These are areas where you can add on to your position, okay? So treat them as entries or add-ons, however you wanna do it but those they're giving you signals basically to enter. Now I like to make sure I'm trading with the trend. So like I said, before I look down here, my first point is, do I know what the target is? And I do think the target is up here at 300. Certainly that gap fill, I'm only looking for longs. I'm probably going to take all of these longs, honestly, and um, head towards my target. I rely more on that than I'm going to rely on this. Because you remember, indicators are lagging behind price. They're not always as reactive. I do like to be following the trend with this line here. This is the long-term trend. As long as this is green, I'm okay taking longs with a wide stop. If you don't want to use a wide stop and you want to get in what you know your stop at the bottom of the pivot which some people just don't like to use a wide stop me i find that if i do this i get stopped out a lot and the trade goes without me it's like death by a thousand cuts not my favorite so i do give my trades a lot of room if i entered here i'm down below vwap if i entered here i'm down below vwap if i enter here i'm down below vwap you know once the trade goes in my direction and it pulls back and it breaks this pivot high, I'm moving my stop to right here below the New York Open and the same thing. So I, and then it's coming down. Once it breaks this pivot low here, I'm exiting my position, okay? And that's how I manage the trades. So I'm taking my first position wherever I set my target. Sometimes I do keep it at the 30 ticks and sometimes I move it closer to a level I think we're gonna hit, so. Like the New York Open is close. If I entered here, I'm going to front run my stop right here below the New York Open. I'm going to set my runner up here by the daily candle open. So that's all I'm saying. You can use these. Like here, you got a signal, firm signal, everything matched up. I definitely would take this once we broke this pivot here for the short. I wouldn't take it into that level, right? I'm not going to take a trade right into the daily candle open, especially when I think the target is up high. I'm waiting for a pullback and I will enter on the break of the pullback here. This is where I would take the short. Every one of these bricks that have little wicks on the top are little pullbacks you can move your stop to. Lock in some profit as you go. Now sometimes I will give my even my runners some more room. I won't lock the profits in. And again, it really depends on where is my target. You know, I like to try to hold my runners for the full target if I can versus just getting stopped out really quickly and it going without me. I'm trying not to risk more than $200 per trade. So my initial risk is $100. And if I add on, I'm going to tighten my stop so that my whole position is not larger than $200 per trade. And that's how I've been managing this. I don't have a good risk to reward. I'm risking two to make one. But I think my win rate's going to be very high. So this is kind of how I'm setting it up. I'm using all these different things here to help me manage the trade, my round number levels, my spots, my targets, you know, the open lines, volume profile. Remember, I'm always looking at this chart. I try to stick with whatever these bricks are doing. If they're green, I like to be in the longs. If they're red, I want to be in the shorts. Right now we're at lunchtime and we always chop over lunchtime, guys. And that is what is happening here. You can see that we're chopping up and down. 
That's why I don't trade the lunchtime. Right now I see we're stuck between the Daily Candle open and the New York open. That is our range. It's a very tight range, 17 to 56. No reason to be trading in there, none at all. But if you had to, you should only be long. You know, this brick is green, you're long. I do have a very simple strategy. I think it takes some time to understand how I figure out the market direction because I'm using so many things here, but I am pretty accurate in figuring out the market direction. I will, I will say that. I do call it out a lot. You'll see as I start putting those shorts out in the morning, I'm going to call the direction if I know it. So, like this morning, I didn't know. I wasn't sure. I, I saw a good case for up or down, so I was just waiting for the market to tell me. We also got a TO indicator arrow right here on the 30-minute chart. We are in longs. I think 300 is certainly the first target. I don't know how much farther up we can get, maybe up to the EMA here. That would put us around 350, 330, 350. So anyway, I just wanted to share that. Very happy with my result today. 944, 827. Now I could easily take a couple more trades in the afternoon to get to, you know, $1,000, $1,200. I'm trading on two computers here, so I wasn't fully focused on this account. I was also trading my other accounts. So, but if I was just focused on one account, copy into 20, it is totally doable to make this kind of money every day on micros. And I never risked more than like 220. So here are some trades. I thought I would take a trade just to kind of show you how that's working. Probably wouldn't enter way up here. I'd wait for a little pullback back to this blue line. And then we're going to take a long, but I do think, all right, let's take the short. Order filled. I'm just going to put this down here close to the open. I'm going to leave it at the 30 ticks. It's right above the daily open. My stop is up there above 90. Good enough. I'm going to leave it go. It's only $100. Even if I moved it up here, it's only 150 And I'm on SIM now, guys. I'm just showing you how to do it, okay? If... The, the price goes against me, I will re-enter at 300, okay? I'm using these levels to add on and take profit. I'm not going to add on right here and just anywhere. I'm going to add on at a place where it makes sense, okay? I want to add on where if I'm wrong, I can add on and I have enough room for the pullback to get me at break even or even possibly with a little bit of profit when I'm wrong. All right, it didn't come to my level here, so I didn't enter a second position. I'm going to wait. Now, right now, we're at lunchtime, and I expect to be a little choppy, so I'm comfortable trading a counter trend, but let's see. Now, we got a long entry, and I got, I should have added on. All right, we're going to sell. Order filled. And we're going to move this to the next level, and we're going to move our stop, our target there, and let's see if we can get out break even. I want to be just above 80. We should pull back to 80. I'm going to leave my original contract right there. So I entered the trade, I'm wrong. I need to get out of this trade. I wanna to try to get out with as little as possible of a loss. Now my risk is only 155. I'm gonna bring it down even more. All right, I'm Target not break filled. even and I've got a little profit going. Let's see, I think I'm gonna get out here. All right, so this is how I'm managing a trade when I'm wrong. You have to be fast at this. I wasn't very good at this yesterday. I was adding on and breaking, you know, letting it hit my stop. That wasn't a good system. I want to be out with less than $200 of a hit because then I can easily recover. Here, I just want to get out. I'm going to um, get out with a little bit of profit, but I entered down That's here. Filled. There we go. So I actually made money on that trade, even though I was wrong. Now we can take the long. Order filled. We're going to put our stop. If I can move it quick. Target filled. I wasn't quick enough. I would have put my stop at the pivot here, but I'm already at break even. I'm at 91.75. I'm probably going to get stopped out. I'm going to move my stop down here. Give my, I'm going to get behind 90 just to give it a little more room. Let's go right there behind 84. Once we break this pivot, I'm going to move to break even. It looks like we pull back to 90. We might even pull back to 90 again. So. A lot of times I'm putting my stop down here, 89.25. I'll hold it with a $4 risk to see if I can get my full target. Now, this is how I'm managing my trades. Once we break the pivot, I'm moving my stop here. Uh, once we go up and we make another pivot, I'm moving my stop there. But I'm always mindful of these round number levels. I don't want my stop to be at 91. 
I want it to be right below like at 89 because if we pull back into that round number level, it usually holds and that's the level that we go forward on. So just be mindful of where you're putting your stops. Try not to be right on the round number. Look to your left. You can see right here, 80 is a lot of reactions. You know, you want your stop below 80. Look at prior pivots. It will always help you figure out where you should put your stops. So anyway, this has been very successful today. I am going to keep practicing. I just wanted to give you an idea of what I was working on. Here's a couple of live trades that I did take today. I'm pretty excited about this. I, I like this system a lot. It's flexible. I'm locking in some profits quickly, but I'm also getting my runner and I hate letting the market go without me, guys. <laughs> I don't like that. So let me know what you think. This is how I'm using Tra Trader Oracle's indicator. I definitely would suggest you go watch a live stream, certainly watch some of his videos and see how he's got this indicator set up for all different kinds of platforms as well. This is coloring my bars here. I will upload this template into the Google Drive. I'll call it the micro scalp template so you can look for it in there. All of these indicators are in the Google Drive. They are all free. If you're using Renko Bricks, you want the Optimus indicator version 1.4. If you're using candlesticks, you want the Optimus 1.8. And all you need to do is add the template to your documents folder, install the indicators, and then just right click load attach the template. Your template is going to set up just like my chart. All my settings will be set. I'm not going to go through all of the settings here. The only paid indicator I've got here is this TDU initial balance. But like I said, all it does is plot the New York open line for me. The VWAP, you don't need VWAP on this chart. You can totally use it without it. I don't even know where the VWAP is. It's not something I really look at guys, to be honest, but I put it on there. Everything else is free. You don't need to be buying any fancy indicators to trade. All right, guys, that's all I've got for this video. In the video description, you're going to find links to my Google Drive, which you see here. Uh, you're also going to find my email address. If you are interested in joining the Discord, please send me an email. I have got all of these free things for you guys, starting out with a free journal and spreadsheet. This auto calculates for you. It's pretty cool if you check that out. I have got the master prop firm scam list. 
I've got this saved right to my toolbar here and so I can access it easily. I'm updating this constantly. Here are the potential scam warnings. Do not recommend these companies. I'm letting you know why. If you have an issue with a prop funding company, please send me an email and let me know so I can update this real time so we're not getting out here getting scammed by people. I've added my picks for the best five prop firms right now. These are the ones I'm currently funded with or working on. I've got the rules and the payout terms kind of summarized with the cost. I'm adding all these discounts for you guys so it's in one document, easy to access. I'm updating this real time as, or as I see sales or I get scam warnings, I'm adding them on here. I have links and coupon codes from small YouTubers. If you are a small YouTuber, not monetized yet, please send me your affiliate links. I am rotating the links on this, this document like once a month to try to spread the wealth a little bit amongst the smaller YouTube creators. Um, I've got a whole bunch of books for you guys that are free. I share copies of my personal charts. I trade on NinjaTrader. All of my personal chart templates are in there. If you go in here, I've got a tons of different chart templates for you guys here. I'm currently trading on NinjaTrader and Quant Tower. I'm starting to add more things here. And then I have a library of indicators. And as you see, it's pretty large. These are all free. I also have some Addis, Sierra, Quant Tower. I have some custom indicators and I have got just a folder here with the most used indicators. If you're using one of my chart templates, almost everything you need is going to be in there. I am a Renko trader. I have a folder with all of the Renko bricks that I use. I use the Obsidian or Renko pack. So this is the one you want if you want to use my charts. So this is just a free tool and resource for you. If you have anything you want to add to it or share with the community, definitely send me an email. Let me know. I like to share everything I can find with everyone. I hope these things are helpful for you guys. I'm happy to share them. I add to these all the time. You'll see me make videos about new indicators I find. So make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any updates. I would definitely, you know, check in every once in a while on this drive and see if there's anything added. I just added a couple new books. All right, guys. Well, have a great day. I will see you in the next video. Bye.